Good afternoon and welcome now to Popper Bluff Senior High School, Bobby Strenfield Field. I'm Frankie Castillo and this is Mules Baseball presented by First Midwest Bank and joining us right now to start off the pregame show, the head coach of our Mules, head coach John David Patillo and coach, here we go again, a brand new week of high school baseball and hey, your team is one win away from being above 500 yet again this season. Yep. Uh, you know, early in the season, you know, you're thinking about those things a little bit. But uh, the biggest thing is, is we're trying to come out here and get better each day we come out. Absolutely. And let's go back to Saturday. We talked about this after the game against Van Buren. Your team got down by six runs early. But, man, one thing in their vocabulary is they do not know the word quit. They never gave up. And eventually coming back to win by one run in a walk-off dramatic fashion, Walk off double by Case and King. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun that last inning, and uh, you know it's always good to come through and and uh, get it done. Uh, we just don't want to allow ourselves to get down like we did. One thing that I got the opportunity to kind of watch out for during batting practice here today is the wind. Like every other game we've had this year, the wind's going to play havoc in the outfield. How worried in the outfield are you if the ball gets driven out there with this wind? Well, there's nothing to worry about. The kids just got to make a play and, you know, they're – you know, it's. I don't worry about it because I'm not the one out there. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen some of our fence coming apart out there, though, because of the of the yeah. crazy wind. That's for sure. Yeah, it's it's been pretty hectic the last three or four days that we've been out on the field. It's been like this. So, you know, uh, you just you play with it, you learn with it, and uh, hopefully we grow and get better using it. Let's talk about infield changes here today. And the one notice that I can see is Aiden Dawes will be out in left field. Kobe Greenwald's going to be in right. What was the decision behind that move there? Well, I've just got uh, kind of a rotation that I've been using and, and trying to work some guys. And uh, when they look like they're hitting the ball, we try to find them a place to play. And, uh, you know, uh, offensively, we kind of build our lineup around our offensive side and then kind of work defensively from there. But you know, there's definitely some places that p people are playing. You know, I've moved Miles to short today, and, and Spain's been our shortstop all year, playing him at third. It's not a demotion or anything like that. I kind of want to see how our infield looks with uh, with this group on the field. So, uh, you know, it's a like I said, early early season decisions and, and uh, mixing some people around and seeing what they can do. Kaysen King coach is batting 391 so far this year, but with runners in scoring position about 400. I mean, this kid has been clutch pretty much all season for your mules. Yeah, he's he hits the ball hard, and um, you know he's been pretty consistent all year long with the same thing. He, um, you know, we were <laughs> we were talking the other day in that final inning uh, whether to bunt the the guy over to third since we had no outs and with him up and I said no way I said he's our best hitter he's going to get it done and sure enough he hit a, a double out in the gap and and scored Kobe and and uh, he's been awful good for us all year long absolutely through the first eight games now the eight games has come and gone coach what are some things that you guys are still working on that you're not real happy with and you want to see this team clean up just more than anything, um, reps. You know, it's reps. It's being out there. It's uh, making plays. You know, we were talking before they went out into infield. Just uh, being cleaner and and better in um, our cutoff situations. And uh, you know, that was something that I emphasized before they went out there, and something that uh, we were a little sloppy on um, Saturday with that we haven't been. So uh, again, just cleaning up things as we go. Uh, you know, there's gonna, we worked on some bunt situations today out on the field before we started our, our batting practice. And so, um, you know, we're always gonna try to look to get better in areas that uh, we may be a little deficient in. On the mound here today for you, Coach, is David Durbin, the right-handed senior. His ERA this season, 6.720. Talk about him a little bit. And more importantly, will he have a pitch count here today? Well, they'll all have a pitch count. But, um, you know, we've got um, four games this week. Uh, if we're playing well, you know, that'll determine, you know, who our next 
pitcher or two maybe during the game. But uh, if he goes out and works quickly and, and gets them out quickly, then uh, we can extend, you know, expand him a little bit. But we'll just have to see. Um, but we're just playing it by ear. Uh, like I said, a lot of my decisions are based upon, um, you know, how many pitches we have and, and really what we're doing in the next game. So, you know, the other day it may look bad. You know, we had Bratcher on the mound and uh, we gave up six runs in the first inning. And not a lot of that was his fault. Uh, but it, we left him out there because, again, he needed to throw and we needed to, you know, have him for at least a couple innings. And, and uh, you know, he had a quicker inning that next inning. On the other side, Ellington coming in four and six coach in the season. And the first 10 games, their lineup is batting about 247. They're averaging about three runs per ball game. What do you know about him? And more importantly, their starting pitcher is Owen McCormick. And he is coming in with an earned run average of just over four so far this season. Your thoughts on him? Well, I don't know a lot about him. Like I said, I've read a little bit in the paper and just some stuff that I've gotten uh, – you know, and, and, and heard from another coach. But uh, like I said, our thing is we got to go out, read what the pitcher's doing early. That's one thing I was a little disappointed with Van Buren. Uh, I didn't think we adjusted to the lefty very well. Uh, we were out in front of him the whole time. And that was the biggest thing that I was harping on our guys about. Just stay back, hit the ball to the right side, stay back, hit the ball up the middle. And uh, it took us a while before we really did much with that. But we finally picked up on it. But it shouldn't take two innings to do that. You know, we got to pick up on that a little bit sooner than what we did against uh, Van Buren. Let's end this on a positive note. To beat Ellington, Coach, and your team go above 500, we can talk about offense and defense and the overall air production. In your mind, what's it come down to today? The biggest thing is, is catching the ball, making basic plays, and throwing strikes. All right, Coach, thank you so much for the opportunity. Go get them, and we'll see you guys coming up after this ball game. Thanks, man. You betcha. Head Coach John David Patillo joining us live on the pregame. 13 minutes until the first pitch coming up. It is Popper Bluff. It is Ellington. We are live at Bobby Strentful Field here on the campus of Popper Bluff Senior High School. We are live also on Facebook and on YouTube, so do me a favor. Hit that share button for us on Facebook. Let us know where you're watching from, and more importantly, let us know that you can hear everything okay, see everything okay. We always want to know to make sure that we're doing our part before we get started. Coming up with our first pitch in under 14 minutes. We'll take our first time out of the pregame. We'll be back. You're watching and listening to Mules Baseball Live on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. Scott Law Firm is experienced in estate planning and the preparation of documents like wills and trusts. Let the Scott Law Firm help you protect your family and pass along your estate according to your terms. Call Scott Law Firm today at 785-4688. Southeast Signs and Graphics of Poplar Bluff can handle all of your printing needs from t-shirts, wall displays, banners, and so much more. Call their team at 573-772-5566 or get to southeastsignsandgraphics.com.
Brenda, we are back here live in Poplar Bluff where the Mules will take on the Ellington Whippets. And right now, we are watching the Whippets right now. They are doing their infield outfield. And we are coming up now about nine minutes until we have our first pitch coming up here this afternoon. And for the Mules, they are trying to get back above 500 for the first time this season. It'll actually be the second time this season as the Mules did it in the opening game of the season, but now they want to do it again. And to do that, they'll be taking on a team out of Ellington that is coming into the ball game four and six overall. And we're going to be looking at their overall stats coming up here as we get ready for the opening pitch, eight minutes away, as a matter of fact. And let's talk about these whippets coming in to the ball game. We talked briefly about them with Coach John David Patillo and the whip. It's coming into this season. They are two and two on the road so far this year. They are averaging, as you heard a moment ago, about three runs per ball game. However, they're giving up 10 runs a ball game. And so far, neither the Whippets or the Mules have had a team in common at this point. And they're being coached, obviously, by Coach Jim Heim, and, or Jake Heim, rather. And he has been with this program now for 12 years as the head coach. He has been with Ellington for 13 years in some capacity. However, 12 years as the head coach and the assistant coach on this team is Tyler Owen. And they've got some key wins this year. They have defeated Dora earlier this year, also Twin Rivers so far this year. And they've also defeated Bismarck as well losses this year. They have lost to Mountain Grove. They've lost to Greenville 9-2. They've also lost to West County and Valley. They lost to Valley last week 11-4 and their last game against Licking was canceled. That was on Friday and that was due to the severe weather that we saw that we were supposed to see in the area. Thankfully, that did not come to fruition. But nevertheless, a lot of schools ended up and pretty much canceled Friday just because of everything going on with the forecast. Nobody wanted to take any chances, and rightfully so. That was obviously a good move by anybody who canceled the games just because of that purpose. So that being said, today is a new day, and we've got no weather issues pretty much. The only exception is... And I say this every ball game, we've got some wind that we're going to be dealing with here today. And that's nothing new. We always have wind, it seems like, here lately that we're dealing with. But nevertheless, we'll get through this game coming up today in four Popper Bluff. They are hoping to continue on their winning ways. And if the Mules are able to come out here and take care of business, then the Mules will more than likely go up one game above 500. We'll see if that is able to happen coming up here today or not. Now looking over at the Mules, let me make sure I compare my, uh, the coaching staff is giving the lineups here. Up here, I think I've already got the right lineup, but we'll double check just in case. You never know sometimes. Sometimes the coaching staff, they uh, change things on you, and, the, and, they, and you never know. But it looks like that uh, we're good to go here. Dylan Brandon, are going, no, I'm good to go. There you go. So that being said, we've got everything that we need, and we are about five minutes away now. So what we'll do is we'll take our last time out of the pregame. Coming up next, we will have the opening pitch and the opening lineups. We are live in Popper Bluff. It is the Mules and the Ellington Whippets when we come back. You've been listening to our pregame presented by First Midwest Bank. First pitch is on the way next. This is the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers is a third-generation family-owned jewelry and repair store who have served the Poplar Bluff community for over 60 years. Our family has always worked hard to provide the finest jewelry creations and service imaginable.
And we are back here coming up now on the opening pitch here in just a few moments. Right now, we are seeing Coach John David Patillo. He is out talking to the home plate umpire, Raymond Ruth, and the first, or I should say, the field umpire, and Kelly Hampton here today going over the last bit of information, lineups, etc as we get set for the opening pitch here today between the Mules and the Whippets out of Ellington. And much like against Van Buren, I did not see a time these two teams faced off at all in the past. So from all indications, this might be the first time that these two teams have hooked up before. Couldn't find any other statistics or couldn't find any other time that these two met up. So now you see Coach Heim and Coach Patillo both down near home plate. And, of course, we are gearing up now as these two trade lineups. We're going to go to Brandon Spain here in just a moment. He will have the official lineups. And then we will have National Anthem. And then the opening pitch here today between Bluff and Ellington should be a good ball game. And as you heard Patillo say a moment ago on the pregame, we've got not one, we've got four games coming up this week. Today is game one of a big week ahead of us. We've got Ellington today. We are on the road tomorrow. We're going to be live in Sykeston. That should be a lot of fun. SEMO conference game. And I've been to Sykeston one other time at their baseball field. That game will only be on radio. And the main reason why is where we go to set up, there's no power. So we've got to take battery packs and make sure that at least for the radio we're good to go. But it takes an awful lot of power to do baseball on the road. And Obviously, there's not enough battery packs in the world to, to have that uh, ready to go for a three-hour ball game. So tomorrow we'll be on the road on radio only, and then on Thursday back at home against Good afternoon, against. Uh, and welcome to Papa Bluff High School for today's matchup between the Ellington Whippets. So, yeah, now we're going to go over to Brandon Spain here in just a moment as he will have our lineups here coming up in just a moment. But anyways, on Thursday, we're going to be back at home coming up against Green County Tech. And then Friday we'll be off. And then Saturday we will be back on the road against Kelly High School. Right now they are introducing the lineups here for the Ellington Whippets. Aiden Anderson was, was introduced first. Brock Morey, Jake Farmer, Jacob Henry. Also, Kobe Hedrick, Owen McCormick, Brett Gore, and the first baseman is Brett Gore. Raylon Morrissey and Beck McCaden. So we're going to introduce our Mules lineups coming up here, and then we will have our national anthem, and then we will have the opening pitch here today between the Mules and the Ellington Whippets. Batting first, playing center field number two, Dylan Hall. Dylan Hall going to get first up as he's our leadoff man once again today. Kobe Greenwall wearing number 18. Kaysen King wears number 23 coming out now. Also, Noah Spain, usually our shortstop today playing third base. We'll get to that in just a moment. Bryce Dobbs, a freshman being introduced now. Marcus Tabanera running out on the baseball field, wearing number one. There is Dylan Bratcher. He wears number 15. He is our DH here today. Miles Johnson going to play some shortstop for us this afternoon. And, of course, Aiden Dawes in left field. And our pitcher is David Durbin. Now we're going to go down field side. Let's do our national anthem. And then we'll come back with our lineups and opening pitch.
our national anthem and then those famous words by Brandon Spain, let's play ball. Let's go ahead now and run down our starting lineups once again. And Mr. Turner, the Mules always go out on their starting positions before they do the national anthem. I've been covering baseball now. This is my third season for baseball, and they've always done it that way for Popper Bluff. So now let's go ahead and get to our starting lineups here today. And let's talk about the Whippets leading things off. He wears number eight, Aiden Anderson. He is a senior. He is in shortstop today, batting second at left field. Number three, Brock Morey batting third. The catcher, number 29, Jake Farmer batting cleanup today at third base. Number 13, Jacob Henry. Batting fifth, the DH, number 35, Kobe Hedrick. Batting sixth, the pitcher, number four, Owen McCormick. Batting seventh at first base, number 17, Brett Gore. Batting eighth at second base, number 12, right, Raylan Morrissey. And batting ninth at center field, number 11, Beck McCaden. Not batting, but he'll be in the field at right field, number 34, Evan Conway. Looking now at the Mules' defensive lineup today, a couple of changes to talk about. And let's start in the outfield. At number 14, Aiden Dawes. Over in right field, number 18, Kobe Greenwall. In center field, number two, Dylan Hall. Let's look in the field for the Mules. Playing third base today, number 11, Noah Spain. At shortstop is number four, Miles Johnson. Those two kind of flip-flopped here today. Playing first base is number 23, Kaysen King. Playing second, number one, Marcus Tabanera. Behind the plate, number 12, Bryce Dobbs on the mound for the Mules. Number 10, David Durbin. He is coming in today's game, making his second start on the season. He is 1-0 so far. He has pitched eight and one-third innings, nine hits, 14 runs. Eight of them earned 11 walks, 11 strikeouts. He has hit six batters and a wild pitch as well. Our first pitch is underway at 435 on this Monday afternoon. We are underway. I'm Frankie Castile. First pitch taken for a ball. So glad you are tuning in this afternoon with us here for some high school baseball. Tim Hicks doing a phenomenal job on the camera. I'm Frankie Castile. Leading off is Aiden Anderson, batting 286 on the season. He's got three RBIs, one double and one triple. By the way, David Durbin's earned run average is 6.720, pitching eight and one third innings. Joshua Knight tuning in today. Him and Tony are both tuning in via Facebook. So glad you guys are with us here today. Two balls and one strike now as the Mules and the Whippets are officially underway. So Durbin comes set. Here's a 2-1 pitch on the way. In there for a called strike. Good pitch, and now the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Once again, our home plate umpire today, it is Raymond Ruth, and our field umpire is Kelly Hampton. Here is the 2-2 pitch on the way. This one is lined behind first base, and we'll do it again. Still two balls and two strikes. Mules are trying to get above 500 for the first time all the way back since March 17th, the first game of the year. By the way, our game time temperature this afternoon, man, it feels nice out there today for sure. This one popped up behind us, and the count remains at two balls and two strikes, 72 degrees at first pitch time. Our dew point, 61, and it feels like 72. The winds at south-southeast at about 15 miles an hour. That one's outside for a ball. The count is full at three balls and two strikes. Boy, on Saturday, that wind was a straight north wind. I had to have the window closed the entire ball game. It was that chilly outside. Today, it's wide open, though. This one up high, and Durbin lost him on a walk. So a runner on first base with nobody out here as Anderson walks down to first base. He draws his fourth walk of the season. So now coming up to the plate, Brock Morey. Morey batting 290 on the season, a couple of RBIs. He also has nine base hits. So now here's the first pitch. 
just misses for a ball. One ball and no strikes here with a man on first base. So Maury is a sophomore on this team. He's played all 10 games so far for the Whippets, batting 290. Ellington's got a leadoff man on, and he's taking off on the pitch, swinging a miss, a throw down to second, not in time. So Anderson has a stolen base here, and now they've got a runner on second base with nobody out. Good running by Anderson. We knew he was going to take off the way he was dancing there on first base. So now Maury kind of changes things a little bit. And this one is going to be outside. Durbin didn't like the call. Two balls and a strike. So two balls and one strike here. Nobody down here in the top of inning number one. We are so glad you are tuning in for some high school baseball. There's a swing and a miss, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Awaiting on deck, a senior Jake Farmer. Farmer is batting 269 this year. But now the Whippets have a leadoff man in scoring position. Swing and a miss, good pitch, and the punch out. One down here in the inning for David Durbin. That is strikeout number 12 on the year. So now Farmer coming up to the plate, batting at 269, at six RBIs. He is second on the team in ribbies so far this year. This one taken for a ball up high. One ball and no strike. So tomorrow we will be on the road at Kennett. It's going to be windy tomorrow too. I can, or I'm sorry, Sykeston, not Kennett. Sykeston, or I should say Kennett comes up later on this month on February or make that April 21st. Coach Mathis, his wife is tuning in. There's a swing and a miss. The count is even. One ball, one strike. Miss Hannah Mathis tuning in with us. Glad to see that she is tuning in for some high school baseball here today. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch by Durbin. Taken outside for a ball. He's behind in the count. Two balls and one strike. Our broadcast today being brought to you by First Midwest Bank, also by Kevin's Automotive and Towing, PB Realty Legacy Farm and Land Specialists, Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, Russians Towing, and Air Solutions. Here is the 2-1 pitch on the way. And Anderson taking off, and this one gets him in the back. And he's got to go back to second base. So Durbin with his seventh hit batsman of the season. Two runners on and only one down here in the inning. Now batting 13, Jacob Henry. Mules have a history of this so far. Uh, starting off rather slow. Mo Jeffries is tuning in. Kaysen King's grandparents is watching from Jensen Beach, Florida. Oh, my goodness. Do I dare? Oh, there's a rip down the left field line. This one's going to get out of play. Ellington as a team so far this year. They've got two home runs together between all nine of their starters. So how is the weather in Jensen Beach, Florida? I'm going to be jealous, aren't I? I've got a feeling I may not like the answer. It's cloudy and 72 here in Popper Bluff. No balls, then a strike. Runners take off again. Oh, Bryce had it. I thought Dobbs had a play at third, at third base, not to be the case. It is a swing and a miss. No balls and two strikes. However, Anderson with a stolen base, as does Farmer. It is the double steal there. And now runners on second and third base. No balls and two strikes. This one is ripped into right field for a base hit. One run comes in to score. Make it two runs come in to score. It is a two run base hit by Henry. And now quickly two nothing here in the top of inning number one. And we're going to get Casey Beast, our pitching coach now, will come out and talk to David Durbin, a two RBI base hit. And much like we saw back on Saturday, the Mules got down by six runs in that first inning against Van Buren. Ellington, though, 
they are a much better team, at least in my opinion. So they don't want to get down by a whole lot. Oh, Sunny and 82. I knew I wasn't going to like that answer. Now, the good news is it's going to be about 80 degrees here tomorrow, but we've got some wind to deal with, and we're going to get some strong storms possibly coming in later on tomorrow night. I bet there's not much wind where you are down there in Florida, is there? Two RBI base hit by Jacob Henry. Henry picks up RBI six and seven now on the year. He is now tied for first in the RBI category. Kobe Hedrick now coming up to the plate. Hedrick is batting, or make that Jacob Henry rather. He is batting a buck 54. Nope, that is Kobe Hedrick. He is batting 379. It takes a call to strike one. So Hedrick batting 379, seven RBIs, four doubles, and a home run so far this year. He's got some power. One down in the inning at Mules Trail, 2-0. Durbin calls for time and steps off the rubber. Boy, Henry down there on first base, making Durbin a little bit nervous. He's got some speed. They are being aggressive. No, he is safe on the slide. Owen McCormick, he is the pitcher. He is awaiting on deck right now. One down in the inning. It is a score of two to nothing. This one taken outside. One ball and one strike now. Ellington's got one hit, two runs so far. Ah, my son Chance is tuning in back at home. He's watching us on the big screen right now on YouTube. Tim, he says he likes that camera you've got on first base. This one just misses for a ball. Durbin didn't think so. Two balls in a strike. As long as it's called consistently. Two balls and one strike. I know my son's watching that weather ever so closely. He is the weatherman, tells me that he thinks the uh, main severe threat may stay west of us. We're gonna hold him to that. Throw back to first base is not in time. He knows if he's wrong and we get severe weather, we're all going to blame Chance. We're going to send our hate mail. I'll give you the address later to where you can find him. Two balls and one strike. Swing and a miss. Way to come back on the pitch. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. Runner on first base, one down in the inning. Ellington leads at 2 nothing. David Durbin now. Two balls and two strikes. Big pitch on the way. Here's your 2-2 pitch from David Durbin. This one up high. Count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Coach Patillo tells me not much of a pitch count here today for David Durbin, although pitch number 26 is upcoming. I know Coach Patillo and Coach Beast would like to have maybe two or three innings from Durbin. And a call to strike three, and Hedrick did not agree. He looked very surprised by the pitch, and two down in the inning. Second strikeout of the inning for David Durbin. So now Owen McCormick is coming up to the plate, batting a buck 11 so far this season. No RBIs. As a matter of fact, he's only got one base hit so far this year. Bryce Dobbs out to talk to his pitcher. Our broadcast here today presented by First Choice Insurance, PB Realist, or make that Popper Bluff Regional Medical Center. Also being brought to you by Patriot Auto Glass, Christian Automotive and Tire, and Eye Care Specialist. 72 degrees at game time here today. So now Durbin comes set. Here's your first pitch to McCormick. Swing and a miss. He's ahead in the count. No balls in a strike. It is 3.30 down the left field and right field line. Straight away, it's 400. We was watching batting practice earlier. Some of the mules like Case and King also Noah Spain was getting it near that 400 sign. There's another swing and a miss, and now it's no balls and two strikes. David Durbin, one pitch away from getting out of this inning. He'll take it. Pitch number 29 upcoming for the senior. Mules trying to get out of this inning. We'll look at our comments on YouTube coming up following this pitch, and that one's taken up high for a ball. One ball and two strikes. 
Let's see here. Coach Shukard is tuning in. Him and Connor, of course, Shukard is a football coach. Awesome guy tuning in from South Wilby. And Durbin over to first base is going to get behind Kaysen King. And Henry is now going to wind around second base, and he'll come back. One ball and two strikes. So the Mules with an air here in the ball game now. That's their first one, a runner on second base. Here's the one-two pitch and holds off. It's now two balls and two strikes. Thank you, Roger, for letting us know. Looks like the umpire here behind the plate may be a newer guy here in this area as far as umpiring goes. Oh, this one got him in the back, and that one stung all the way up here in the booth. Oh, I heard that one. McCormick is going to trot down to first base. We may get a courtesy runner here. We'll see. He is the pitcher. That one stung for sure in the middle of the back. As of right now, McCormick is staying in the game. He'll be on first base. And now Brett Gore is coming up to the plate, the seventh man to bat in the inning. Runner on first and second base, batting a buck 30 so far, two RBIs this season. This one is fouled away to the screen. No balls and one strike. Already 32 pitches. Gary Hall tuning in, watching his grandson, Dylan Hall. Glad to have you alongside, Gary. Watching us on YouTube here today. Big crowd on YouTube and on Facebook. Sun coming out just a little bit. One ball and one strike. Mules here down by two runs early in the game. Count is one and one. Durbin is trying to get out of this inning with no more damage done. We'll see if he's successful. Strike two is called. Good pitch by Durbin. One ball and two strikes. Durbin now comes set, and here's the one-two offering. Fouled off the umpire's helmet. And we're going to do it again. Still going to be one ball, two strikes. So it's one ball and two strikes here following the foul off the umpire's helmet. And pitch number 36 now coming up here for Durbin. This one is outside. Dobbs tried to backhand it. And it's going to get away. And now the runners will advance. This one was a wild pitch. As both are going to advance on the wild pitch, McCormick is now on second base, and Henry is now on third. Two balls and two strikes. Count is even. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch by David Durbin. Big pitch coming. Swing and a miss, and the Mules are out of the inning, but not before two runs come across. We are going to the bottom of inning number one. Two runs on one hit, one air, two left on. Mules down by two runs on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
So the mules are down by two runs as we get ready for the bottom part of inning number one. And for the mules, let's take a look now at the mules uh, offensive lineup here today. Leading us off will be the center fielder Dylan Hall. Batting second is at right field Kobe Greenwall. Batting third, he is the first baseman Kaysen King. Batting cleanup Noah Spain. Batting fifth here today, he'll be the catcher. He is the catcher Bryce Dobbs. Batting sixth at second base. Marcus Tabanera batting seventh. He is a DH in Dylan Bratcher batting eighth. He's playing shortstop here today. Miles Johnson batting ninth in left field is Aiden Dawes. And the pitcher obviously is David Durbin. Now defensively for the Whippets of Ellington. In left field is Brock Morey. Right field, Evan Conway. In center field is Beck McSpadden or McCadden rather. And around the horn now, third base is Jacob Henry. Shortstop is Aiden Anderson. Second base is Raylan Morrissey. At first base, Brett Gore behind the plate is Jake Farmer on the mound today for the Whippets of Ellington is Owen McCormick. He has pitched 14 and one-third innings. He is making his fourth start here this season with a record of 1-0. First pitch way inside for a ball. And we are underway here in the bottom of inning number one. McCormack, McCormick, rather, he has pitched 14 and one-third innings, giving up 22 hits, 15 runs, nine earned. He's also walked nine, struck out five, and he's hit four batters as well. Those are the numbers for McCormick making his fifth start or make that fourth start here this season. That one's taken for a strike right down the pike. Two balls and a strike. Good pitch. Let's see here. This one taken inside for a ball. Three balls and one strike. This one is taken to left field, and it's going to get down for a hit. Oh, he's going to say foul ball. I didn't see that when I thought it was fair. Woo. Three balls and two strikes now. Count is full. I was a little preoccupied there. My son sent me a text message, and I told you he watches this weather like it's going out of style, right? He tells me that uh, the models are changing a little bit. And I know you're listening or watching right now, Chance, so you got to do me a favor. Oh, strike three is called. Good pitch. One up and one down here in the bottom of inning number one. Dylan Hall struck out looking. Greenwall coming up to the plate now, batting 318 on the season. Greenwall, he's got four RBIs so far this year. And first pitch inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. So, Chance, I know you're listening right now. Send me a text message if you don't mind and let me know, are you thinking that it's going to be worse in our area or is it going to be farther west again? He's watching it for me. Inside pitch again, two balls and no strikes. I hope he does something I never did, and that is continue your education and get that meteorology degree. Swing, foul tip, it's two balls and a strike. Believe it or not, Tim, when I was growing up, I also wanted to be a meteorologist, but I didn't go to school for it. Instead, I went to school for criminal justice. Don't know why I made the switch, but I did. Here is the 2-1 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, good pitch by McCormick. And now the count is even, two balls and two strikes. Here is the 2-2 pitch. Inside pitch is called for a strike. Throws Greenwall. And now quickly two up and two down here in the inning. Struck out looking. So now Kaysen King is coming up to the plate. Boy, King had a big day on Saturday, a walk-off win, a double. He is batting 391 this year. He's got six doubles. Out of nine hits that so far, this one's popped straight up in the air. Morrissey, nope, going to be called off by Anderson. And that was a quick one, two, three inning by 
the Whippets of Ellington. It took just 12 pitches, three up and three down. Morrissey, Beck, and Anderson when we come back. Mules down 2 nothing. You're listening to Mules Baseball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Caring for those you love also means taking good care of yourself. At Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center, our health care providers take the time to identify your health risks and help you prioritize good health. Regular checkups and age-appropriate screenings are important to be healthy now and stay well in the future. With same or next-day appointments and online scheduling, we make it easy to make an appointment right now. You can even see us from the comfort of your own home via telehealth. Put your health first today by making an appointment by visiting pbrmc.com and searching online scheduling. Before we go any farther, let's go ahead now and pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching and listening to Mules Baseball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. So here we go at top of the second inning now. It is one minute before 5 p.m. I'm Frankie Castillo. Alongside today on the camera is Tim Hicks. He does a great job, but we are so glad you are tuning in today for some high school baseball. The Mules taking on the Ellington Whippets. Your live coverage continuing on today's talk. 93.3 FM, 9.30 a.m. KWOC, and we are streaming online at kwoc.com. Our video stream is on Facebook and on YouTube and a lengthy warm-up session here between innings. David Durbin is once again back out on the mound here for the Mules. It'll be eight, nine, and one, all due up here in the top of inning number two of Morrissey McCaden and back to the top of the lineup with Anderson is all due up here in the top of inning number two. Mules trail two nothing here early on. So Raylon Morrissey now batting 222 on the year. No homers and no RBIs so far in this season. There's a rip out to left field. Oh, what a catch. What a catch by Noah Spain. Ripped right out of the air. Now that's how you do it right there. That one's going to go L6. That was a good, good catch. Or make that L5, rather. I forget, he's playing third base here today. So now McKaden, McKaden rather, is coming up, and there's a strike called. No balls and one strike. So McKaden. Coming up to the plate, McCaden is batting 250 on the year. He's got one RBI. Already one down here in the top of inning number two. Here's the 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss, and now he's ahead at no balls and two strikes. I appreciate Tim. Had to go down and get me an extra water. I appreciate him for doing that. No balls and two strikes here. Pitch inside for a ball, good take. Not a bad pitch by Durbin being ahead here. No ball or no balls and two strikes. Now it's one ball, two strikes. Durbin now comes set. Already one down here in the inning. Here is the one-two pitch by the senior. In there for a called strike. Fourth strikeout of the ball game here for Durbin. Even though we're down by two runs, and that is four strikeouts here in the game so far. We are back to the top of the inning now. And just like that, nobody on. Two down in the inning. And Anderson, who walked and scored back in the first, is already back up. Yeah. Oh 
One ball and no strikes here to the leadoff man with two down in the inning. There's the ground chopper. This one over to Noah Spain at third base. Long throw, got him in time. What a way to go on that inning. Two of those outs go to Noah Spain. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. Seven pitch inning by Durbin. We are going to the bottom half of the inning. Spain, Dobbs, and Tabanero win. We come back. You're listening to Mules Baseball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Want a career and not just another job? It's waiting for you at Briggs & Stratton. Great pay, great benefits, and continuing education. Everything you and your family deserve. Go to careers.basco.com and look at Poplar Bluff job openings. Breathe easier and extend the life of your HVAC system plus fewer repair bills with Air Solutions' comprehensive maintenance plan. You'll save money and get the peace of mind that only comes from calling Air Solutions. 785-1500. All right, so we are back here, and Tim informs me I did not wear the wrong shirt today. I forgot, I got a confession to make today. Got up at 4.30, and I was heading into work, and it dawned on me. I thought to myself, oh, no, I'm wearing the wrong color shirt. I'm wearing it's kind of like a bright orange color. I didn't realize until I got here that's, all, that's almost the same colors as what Ellington has. But nevertheless, it's a little bit lighter, so I'm in good shape. Strike one is called to Noah Spain. Even if I did wear the wrong shirt, no big deal. No balls in a strike here. Noah Spain batting 455 on the season. Quickly, he's in the hole now. No balls and two strikes. Spain with two doubles this year. He's got four RBIs. He is in the hole right now. No balls and two strikes. This one's popped up out of play, and it'll still be no balls and two strikes. Mules looking for their first base runner of the, of the game. David Durbin, a seven-pitch second inning for that young man. He pitched 37 pitches in the first inning, just misses inside. One ball and two strikes now. Boy, Dur or make that Noah Spain trying to figure out a way to get on base. Here is your one-two pitch. This one up to the middle, off the pitcher's hand. Anderson off the hit glove as well. And Noah Spain is going to end up on first base. Let's see how they score that one. So it looks like it's going to be a single because it did hit the pitcher's glove first. It was a hard hit ball up the middle. So they're going to give him a base hit. So the Mules have their first hit and their first base runner of the ball game. This one has popped straight up. Dobbs now along the first base line and called off by Morrissey. And Morrissey comes up and makes the catch. And we got one. So one down in the inning. So that one is going to go F4 on the out. And Marcus Tabanera coming up to the plate now. Tabanera so far this season, he is batting 364, eight base hits. He's also got three RBIs. Nick Ramsey is tuning in. He says, let's go Mules. He is tuning in on YouTube. Glad to have him alongside here today. Let us know where you're watching from, what team you're going for. Mules are down by two runs here. We are in the bottom of inning number two right now. Mules trail to nothing. Runner takes off. Spain is going to get in head first slide. He is safe. Two balls and no strikes here. Good run by Noah Spain. Spain, another stolen base here today, or I should say this season rather. Spain on the season. That is stolen base number six. 
Two balls and no strikes here. And this one is ball three up a little high. Three balls and no strikes. In there for a called strike. Good take by Tabanera, a 3-0 count. Obviously, make him throw you a strike, and he did just that. Our broadcast today presented by Larry Hillis Dodge, Briggs and Stratton, Scott Law Group, LLC, and Taco Johns. Up high for a ball. The Mules now, they've got two runners on with one down in the inning. And now Dylan Bratcher, man, he has become a clutch when runners are in scoring position. Bratcher is batting 313, but you talk about runners in scoring position, he is batting 273 so far. And boy, the Mules have a big run right now, standing on first base, tying run is on second base. Or make that first base, rather. There's Josh Knight right out there. Strike is called. He's a good kid. I like Josh Knight. Good kid. Bratcher batting left-handed. Batting 313 on the season. Two RBIs. He would like to have RBI number three. There's a strike looking. No balls and two strikes. So now Bratcher is behind. Here is the pitch, and this one way outside. One ball, two strikes now. So one ball, two strikes. We have been on the air now for this game. 34 minutes. We're already in the bottom half of inning number two. This one, ground ball. You bet your base hit to left field. The bases will be loaded. As Spain had to hold up on second base. Did not get a good jump, but either way, it's a base hit to left field. And now the bases are loaded for the Mules. So now the Mules have them loaded with only one down in the inning. And Miles Johnson coming up to the plate now. Johnson, he is batting a buck 54. This one is outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Camille Vaughn is tuning in. Likes what she sees there by Dylan. Talking about Dylan Bratcher, obviously, with that base hit to left field. There's a swing foul tip, and the count is even at one ball, one strike. So Miles Johnson, so far this season, runners in scoring position. He is batting a buck 11. He's got a big RBI standing on third base right now. Tying run on second. This one just misses outside. Ball two, two balls and one strike now. Miles Johnson, very patient at the plate. He has walked seven times this season. This one up high for a ball. Big pitch coming here by Owen McCormick. Pitch number 40 of the ball game is upcoming. Three balls and a strike. Ellington got two runs in the first, none in the second. Here is the 3-1 pitch called strike two. And I think Johnson thought that was a walk. He was headed to first base. He turned around to throw his bat back, and now it's a payoff pitch. One down in the inning. Bases are loaded. I don't think they're going to be running on the pitch. Here's a payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, and now there are two down in the inning. That's a big out. Two down in the inning, and now we are back, or I should say Aiden Dawes, rather, is up to the plate. Third strike out of the ball game for McCormick, and now two down in the inning. Here comes Aiden Dawes' first pitch. Pops straight up to right field. Conway gets underneath it, calls everybody off, and the Mules are going to leave them loaded as we go to the top of inning number three at Mule Strand. Three runners. It is Maury, Farmer, and Henry when we come back. Mules down by two runs on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Christian Automotive and Tire. Quality name brand tires that you know and trust. They also have ASC certified mechanics that have the training tools and knowledge to fix your vehicle right the first time. Business 67 South and Popper Bluff. 
Eye Care Specialists is committed to the protection and the preservation of the precious gift of sight. Nothing is more important than your eyesight. That's the way the doctors of Eye Care Specialists see it. All right, so we are back here in the top of inning number three. Maury, Farmer, and Henry all do up here in the top of inning number three. The Mules with Strand, three runners. Pop fly, this one down the left field line, and foul out of play. No balls and one strike. Boy, I'm hoping that the rain gets out of here by early Wednesday. The family and I, I'm so thankful there's no ball games on Wednesday. Swing and a miss, quickly no balls and two strikes. The family and I, we're gonna get away on Wednesday. We're going to St. Louis to watch the Atlanta Braves and the St. Louis Cardinals on Wednesday. And if I'm not mistaken, this one taken outside for a ball, one ball, two strikes. If I'm not mistaken, I think the middle school in Popper Bluff. They're going to have some of their kids going as well. They're going to be singing the national anthem on Wednesday. This one fouled away to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, something happened here in the crowd. I can't hope everybody's okay down there. I don't I see a lot of people that are swing and a miss. One down in the inning. Fifth strikeout of the game as Maury is down on strikes. One away here in the top of inning number three. So one down here in the inning. And now Jake Farmer, he scored and he was hit by a pitch. This one taken for a ball, one ball and no strikes. I'm not sure what exactly happened down there. I know that uh, Jeff Dawes, one of the trainers is down there. And it's not a player, it looks like it's a fan. So, one ball and one strike here in the top of inning number three. So now David Durbin comes set, and here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Strike two is called, one ball and two strikes. So now Durbin is ahead. One ball, two strikes now. So now Durbin is ahead. Five punch outs already here in the ball game. Hopefully here's number six. It is number six. Dobbs drops the ball, but he throws back to first base in time. And strikeout number six now. So Dobbs and King on the same page, and there's two down in the inning. Now batting number 13, Jacob Henry. So now two down in the inning, and we'll see what the Mules can do with two down here defensively. And now Henry. It's going to come up to the plate, a two RBI base hit. He is the difference right now in this game for the Ellington Whippets. No balls in a strike. Durbin now steps off the rubber. Nobody on here in the top of inning number three. After a rocky first inning for the Mules, Durbin he has retired six straight. 
Here is the pitch on the way inside for a ball. One ball and one strike. Our broadcast here today presented by Taco John's at Scott Law Group, LLC. Also being brought to you by Briggs and Stratton and Larry Hillis Dodge. All proud supporters of Mules Baseball swing and a miss. And now Durbin is ahead, one ball and two strikes. Two down here in the inning. So now Durbin is one pitch away from getting out of the inning. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss and down on strikes again. Durbin again strikes out the side the second time in three innings. Three up and three down. We go to the bottom of inning number three. We are back to the top of the lineup and the Mules are down by two runs on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. Protecting your toys are just as important as protecting your daily driver. First Choice Insurance can help find the coverage for your ATVs, boats, and campers that will give you peace of mind and not break your bank. So don't forget to allow First Choice Insurance to review your insurance needs today. All right, so we are back here in the bottom of inning number three now. We are back to the top of the lineup, and the Mules are down by two runs. So we'll see what the Mules can do. And now that we are back to the top of the lineup here for the Mules, it is Dylan Hall, Kobe Greenwall, and then Kaysen King, if anybody gets on, Noah Spain will be up in this inning as well. Here is the opening pitch coming up now to Dylan Hall taken for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Pitch right back, to, uh, hit right back to the pitcher. Quick out here on the one-three play. One one out here in the top of inning or bottom of inning number three. This one is ripped down the line and foul by Kobe Greenwall. No balls and one strike here. One down here in the bottom of inning number three. That last play, by the way, by Dylan Hall goes 1-3 on the out. So Greenwall down a strike. This one is inside for a ball. One ball and one strike. Count is even now. So Greenwall now digs in. Here is the 1-1 one -one pitch on the way. This one is in there for a base hit. Greenwall is on first base. Mules have their third hit of the ball game. Good hit, good patience by Kobe Greenwall. Now batting, number 23, Kaysen King. Kaysen King now coming up to the plate who popped out to short his first time. Mules have another base runner. Mules have three hits here in the ball game. No runs so far. And the runner takes off Grove Greenwall, and Kaysen King got drilled on that one. Greenwall had a great jump anyway. He would have at least had second base. But now with one down, as King winds up on first base. So Noah Spain, who got the first hit of the ball game. Find a 
So now Coach Mathis is going to check on Kaysen King. He got drilled on that one. He couldn't get out of the way. Here we go. Here we go. Says he's good. We're good to go. By the way, David Durbin, seven strikeouts here in the ballgame. After a rocky first inning, he has retired the last seven batters that he's faced. First hand. 